We are going to talk about the chalice of consciousness, the grail that Arthur's knight sought. And so, if we go back in time, in every great civilization, in every tradition, there has been an extraordinary but mysterious convergence of various kinds of symbols placed above or behind the head. And these symbols run from the very familiar halo of Christian saints back to the sun disks of ancient Egypt and include the royal crown of the Zerosian Persians. Whilst in Crete and Egypt, you will sometimes find that the sun disk seems to be resting on horns converging at the top of the head. We progress through time and space and gain energy in the crown center. This energy can grow and open and attract energies from the cosmos. People who are open to these energies look like stars if you look down upon them and can see auras. They are real shining ones, the bright ones, and cosmically speaking, they help our planet to raise to a higher level of consciousness. So, while we want to examine this in a very objective way, it is good also to try to feel that we are looking at something very holy and special. And therefore, if we raise our energies a little and try to see whether we can feel some of the beauty and wonder of what is above the head itself. Let us begin by sensing that there are emanations from us. These emanations must interact with energies around us. If we think of our energy field, it is shaped like a fountain. It sparkles and glows, and as energies meet and mingle and rub across each other, it is like a fireworks display. So we have energies coming down from the cosmos, energies which move around the earth, energies that are projected from us, and energies coming from other people, from plants and from stones and from animals. All these energies linked up together create many colors around us. We have a central core to all this beauty and many centers from which energy can pulsate. Various descriptions are available about the top of the head area. Let us look into this so that we can understand how different people reacted to seeing the top of the head. Obviously, it has been impossible for anybody to draw it accurately or to photograph it. And therefore, we are not going to get a very clear picture. But one thing is important. No matter how varied the descriptions are, they do have many things in common. If we start with the red Indian feathers, we should be aware that energies that move create some form of energy field around themselves. This makes them look feather-like. When a psychic sees vibrations moving, it looks as if they are being projected in straight lines. If we look closer, we find that this is not the case. The energies move in waves. So unless we magnify the vibrations to look at them very closely, 
we do not lose the appearance of feathers.